Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Mmm, yes, queen. Nightclub. Time to turn up that EDM and dance. <laughs> but at the end of the night, no drunk driving. Wouldn't want to end up in a trauma bay, or put someone else there, and need to run through the good old ATLS algorithm. Incidentally, that's what this sketch is on. Let's break it down. Approach to the trauma patient begins with the primary survey, hence this club's primary entrance. The primary survey seeks to identify and control the injuries most likely to kill the patient in order of speed. And believe me, it's easy as A, B, C, D, E. Literally, A, B, C, D, E. It's the order of the steps for the primary survey. Airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and environment and exposure. And while it's technically an order, a lot of these will actually happen simultaneously. We refer back to these ABCDs of trauma throughout Sketchy with this ABCDE license plate. A is for airway, and airway is always, always first whenever you're evaluating a trauma patient. Kind of like how the celebrities in this A-list section always come first in the nightclub. Burn the aristocracy. To begin, assess whether the airway is patent, meaning open enough to allow air to flow, and protected, as in the patient is conscious enough to keep their airway safe. This step is so important that there's generally one person whose sole job is to assess and secure the airway. Quick tip here, ask the patient their name. If they can reply, like this A-lister hoping to get into the bottle service section, then their airway is patent, and you can also listen for any gurgling or sounds that could indicate deeper injuries. In fact, it also gives you some information for B, C, and D as well. And their name. Use it. It's important. Make a connection. Note that throughout this whole airway evaluation, the patient likely has a cervical collar on, probably about the same size as this massively oversized turtleneck. So 90s. It's there to prevent excess movement in case of cervical spine injury. If the collar is removed, manual inline stabilization should always be maintained, meaning someone holds the neck in line with the body whenever the patient is moved, turned, or during any intervention. Evaluate the airway for obstruction as well. These velvet ropes are obstructing the entrance to the A-lister section as a reminder. Blood, vomitus, and mucus can be suctioned out. But even if the airway is open currently, assess whether it's going to stay open. A swollen tongue or an expanding paratracheal hematoma that could block the airway should prompt intubation. Structural damage to the face or airway, like this broken glass, could also require intubation. Maxillofacial fractures or severe neck trauma complicate airway procedures and make it important to secure an airway early and signs like subcutaneous emphysema or gurgling noises may indicate deeper airway structural damage called a tracheobronchial tree injury. A couple of situations may also call for securing the airway via intubation, even if there's nothing obviously wrong with the airway itself. Patients unable to protect their airway due to decreased consciousness also require intubation. For example, patients with a GCS less than 8 aren't conscious enough to clear their airway if they were to vomit. And for patients with burns, thermal injury to the supraglottic pharynx can cause severe edema and blistering that can block the airway. Just like drinking this flaming shot would probably do. Yowzer. Signs like perioral or oropharyngeal burns, blistering or erythema, singed facial or nose hairs, or soot in the pharynx or sputum are indications for early intubation. And although alternatives exist, the most preferred method to secure the airway in trauma is with oral endotracheal intubation. Rarely, if intubation is impossible, the last ditch effort is an emergent cricothyroidotomy involving an incision in the cricothyroid membrane through which the endotracheal tube is inserted directly into the trachea. Special note, if an exam is asking whether you should do an emergent crike or an emergent tracheostomy, don't 
pick emergent tracheostomy. It's never the right answer. Just cross it off. Crikes are technically easier and also faster. Next up is B for breathing, highlighted by this uh, bachelor party zone. Whereas airway was clearing the road for air to pass through, breathing makes sure the mechanisms to move air in and out are working, aka the lungs, diaphragm, and pleural spaces. Assess for breath sounds on both sides while watching for appropriate chest rise and fall, and check the rate of breathing and oxygen saturation level. 